IPI chastises police CID over a report that seeks to exonerate former Secretary uh, Charles Bissou. President Tekufuado appoints James Supon Bueno as Acting Inspector General of Police. And Ministry of Education says it will in September only post teachers who sat their licensure exams. In business, Buck Oil Storage and Transportation Company Limited to develop pipelines infrastructure to reduce over-reliance on bulk road vehicles in transporting petroleum products. On the foreign front, South Africa's highest court rules public protector Busisiwe Mambani lied under oath and acted in bad faith. Including sports and entertainment coming up this hour and stay with us as we begin with the top story of the day. And tonight, President Yekufado has appointed Deputy Inspector General of Police James Opombuenu as Acting Inspector General of Police. This follows a directive for David Asante Pietu to proceed on leave with immediate effect. Deputy Inspector General of Police James Opombuenu will act as IGP until a substantive IGP is appointed in accordance with the Constitution, a statement from the Presidency announced. COP Opong Buenu was, on September 25 last year, appointed as the new Deputy Inspector General of Police. Prior to his appointment as Deputy IGP, he had attained the retirement age of 60 years. He was, however, given a one-year contract extension after he wrote to the Interior Ministry seeking an extension of his service. The Deputy IGP position, which is part of the Police Service Regulations under CI 76, has been vacant for many years. But recently, the Police Administration appointed a Pong Bueno, who was then the Director General of Administration, to fill the position in September 2018. President Akufuado has meanwhile directed David Asantia Pietu to proceed on leave ahead of his retirement on August 14 this year. Here's a brief profile of David Asantia Pietu. David Asantia Pietu's leave is pending his retirement from the Ghana Police Service on Wednesday 14, 2019. He became IGP on January 25, 2017. Prior to his appointment, David Asantia Pietu was the head of the General ICT Department at the police headquarters as well as the head of the Marine Police. He also served as the Director General in charge of research and Director General of the Police CID. David Asantia Pietu work outside Ghana include an appointment as Director of the Specialized Crime and Analysis SCA Unit at the Interpol headquarters in Lyon, France in 2007. He also worked at the Sarajevo Police Academy, Police Ethics and Criminal Investigations under the United Nations Task Force in Bosnia-Herzegovina from 1997 to 1998. David Asantia Pietu also worked as a homicide investigator under the United Nations Mission in Liberia and was a team leader in investigations into the mass murder of more than 50 people in the Gambia. Asantia Pietu pursued a Master of Science degree in Chemistry at the Kharkov State University in Ukraine, graduating in 1985. Upon returning to Ghana, he enrolled at the Ghana Police Academy in Accra from 1988 to 1990, where he graduated with a certificate in police duties. Asantia Pietu proceeded to Ghana Institute of Management and Public Administration, Gimpa, in 1993, where he obtained a certificate in general management. He obtained a certificate in criminal justice administration from the University of Virginia in 2002. In 2011, he enrolled at Gimpa for an executive master of business administration, graduating in 2013.
Here we have Richard Kumado. He's a security consultant on the phone, and we'll be speaking to him right away. Richard, good evening, and thank you for joining us. Good, good evening, bro. Right. So what does the appointment of retired officers who have contract extension have on morale of personnel? Yeah, uh, it must be from the background of the fact that uh, it's the president's prerogative to appoint IGP. Mm. But to the extent that after you still have a few days to go on retirement, uh, the new one has also got in a contract extension. It's making the thing very messy and it's making it very agitative. But uh, uh, we can't take that prerogative from the president. It's early days yet, and let's wait what unfolds. Richard, um, Asante P2 was supposed to go on retirement on the 14th of August. Here we are with a directive forcing him to go. What issues come to mind immediately? Now, I, I, I'm, thinking, I'm thinking that uh, from the way I played to what appointed was from the, the backdrop of the fact that they smuggled him from the back door. Uh, this particular one has two weeks to go on retirement. The president appoints him as a deputy. The same president appoints the CID boss. Uh, from corporate governor's point of view, which security is a management tool, you could see there are some corporate governance issues. The team were not speaking, and they were not working together as a team to provide the kind of effectiveness of a police force that will keep our streets clean and that will make policing very attractive. And you could understand the public agitations that came from the backdrop of that they were rising crime and kidnapping has taken the central position in this country. And the, post, the president who appoints has the power to fire. So you can understand some of these things who also uh, play a very role in they asking him to leave, especially when his days are numbered anyway. Richard, let's focus on the incoming James Opombueno as the new IGP. Is he the best out of the many names that have come up? No, from where I stand, I'm not saying he is the best. But then when it comes to appointment of uh, IGP, most time it's not about credibility, it's about political loyalty, and it's about somebody the president is comfortable playing the same team with. It's unfortunate, normally it's about the political maneuverings and political loyalty above, above nationality and above credibility. But if you read the profile of this one, and as PA2 and Madam T.Y. and Kofi Bwachi, you can see that these are guys who have come to the ranks with a lot of credibility and a lot of people, a lot of people have worked with them and they might be able to support them. But hey, they get to that position. How the appointed sometimes create problems for them. They are not able to also put that credible teams together. And there's much of political interference. And most times they refuse to behave as professionals. And that is what is happening. Today here we are talking about the failures of our people who was once a very good police officer with a lot of international reputation and credibility, but they have all failed, and this particular one was also part of our people. And so for where that stand, I wouldn't have even loved him to be the IGP, but that is the prerogative of the president. Right, Richard, uh, Opon Bueno is coming at a time the country is confronted with a lot of security challenges. How well will he fit in? The, I, I, I don't see how he fit in. How he fit in will be that, one, he will need to be focused. Number two, he has to be seen as some who is setting his priorities right. Number three, he has to put up a team together immediately that will bring credibility and revive the junior ranks with a lot of energy. Number four, the politicians must take their hands off. Number five, he must act as a professional. Next year election is a very crucial one. And Ayawa to work work on is a test case. If he's not able to run with all these things I'm talking about and the permutations do not favor him, then you will see him go and either Kofi Bwachi or Madam Tiwa will be the front line. As an acting IGP, what can he do about the Afoku case? That's much he can do. We have all been in the law enforcement agency for some time now. The standard ideas are the same. They've never varied. What you need is your credibility, number two, your stature, number three, your leadership style, and number four, the team you have around you. You must be able to raise the issues and defend them at the highest level. If you look at Ayawato West Wagon and then the short commission and the contradictions we saw, you could realize that within the whole national security setup, 
that lack of collaboration and strategic communication is not working for them. That's what is creating the problem for them. Otherwise, whoever you put in there, the standard procedures are the same. Professionalism must rise above political loyalty. Otherwise, they will all have themselves to blame. Richard, finally, police shakeups, you know, come in after appointments of this nature. Do you think he should also carry out changes? No, I think yes, he has the prerogative. When you come to power, you must act as one. You must take control. And what leaders bring to power is what they offer to the masses. Now you have the permission. Take charge, bring control, rally the boys around you. Make sure you're sitting at the top. You are working with them and speaking with them. The language you speak, no political language. That we have a case at stake, and these are the things I'm putting on the table. Your credibility and your stature and your interpersonal skills will go a long way to help you. Otherwise, you will fail, no matter whoever you put there. I pray that he play by the rules, he rally the things around. Create a creativity machinery around the region that will generate the stations that will make the police very effective in this country. Otherwise, I'm afraid for him. Richard Kubado, we are grateful for your contribution to our news this evening. Richard is a security consultant. Still on this development, the former Inspector General of Police, David Asantia Petu, and the Director General of Police Criminal Investigations Department, Mami Tiwa Adodankwa, have for the third time failed to appear in court. The duo were expected to respond to contempt charges against them over their refusal to comply with a bail order for Gregory of Foko. The failure of the two to appear in court led the judge, Justice Jennifer Dodu, to adjourn the case, insisting they had to appear in person to face the charges. It is not clear why the two again failed to make an appearance. At the last hearing, the case was adjourned as the two were out of the jurisdiction of Ghana. The summoning of the two by the court followed their disregard of a court order in March 2019 to grant bail to a focal after the court's registry had said uh, other conditions. The judge was expected to deliver a ruling on whether the inaction of the two security chiefs was contempt of court. In March this year, Gregory Afoko was admitted to bail in a sum of 500,000 Ghana cities with two sureties. His trial started in 2016 and was nearing completion after the prosecution and the defense counsel closed their cases. And now, investigative body, Tiger IPI, has chastised the Criminal Investigation Department of the Ghana Police Service in its latest report that seeks to exonerate Charles Bissell, a presidential staffer and former secretary to the Interministerial Committee on Illegal Small-Scale Mining. According to Tiger IPI, the CID has no locus in declaring the suspect, Charles Bissell, and persons linked to him in the Galamsey fraud expose as innocent. Investigative firm Tiger IPI has rubbished reports from the Criminal Investigative Department of the Ghana Police Service, which says it has exonerated Charles Bissu, former secretary of the Interministerial Committee on Illegal Mining, of any wrongdoings. The CID said Mr. Bissu and other persons associated with him, who were alleged to have engaged in various acts of corruption, were not found culpable in its investigations. The CID further stated that its investigations primarily relied on the documentary and other sources as already indicated. The CID added Anas Arume Yawanas failed to avail himself to assist in investigations and also provide a copy of the unedited version of the documentary. But in a reply from the Tiger IPI, the investigative body said it welcomes the decision of the police to remove itself from the investigations. This is because the involvement of the Ghana Police Service in the said investigation has been nothing but needless duplicitous and superfluous and a total waste of resources. The statement also said, in February 2019, a petition was sent to the Office of the Special Prosecutor just at the same time the documentary was published. Tiger IPI noted that its lawyers deemed the Office of the Special Prosecutor most suitable to investigate this matter, which also involves politically exposed persons. 
Tiger IPI added it did not send a petition to the Ghana Police Service and it has not participated in any purported investigation by the service. The statement said has conducted itself in this matter as an unhappy, unsolicited busybody with no real substance to inform a decision. The office of the special prosecutor, according to Tiger IPI, is fully seized with the matter and it is still conducting its investigations. In a related development, the special prosecutor Martin Amidu, in an interview in a crowd based CTFM, argued the criminal investigation department has no jurisdiction to make such conclusions. Let's listen to him. They petitioned us in February this year. We replied to them the same men to tell them we we're going to investigate it. Their petition to us was published in the news media. They chose to publish our reply to them in the news media. We commence investigation. But before I could invite the suspect, I read a newspaper publication in which Charles Bissou said that the CID was investigating his case and that the complainant should go there and make their evidence. So I wrote to the Director General CID to tell her that the offenses of corruption have been apportioned to the Office of Special Prosecutor. We have been petitioned. We have indicated that we are going to begin investigation. There shouldn't be duplicity of our efforts, so she should stop it. Now let's move away from those top news issues of the day and coming up is another big one. The Ministry of Education says it will not post teachers who have failed to write their licensure exams in September this year. Public Relations Officer of the Ministry, Kwisi Obingfusu, told Daniel Opoku the move is to ensure that teachers in the education sector are properly recognized in their profession. The Ministry of Education has indicated its plans to post more than 10,000 teachers in September this year. The teachers, according to the Ministry, are those who have completed their national service and written their licensure exams. Already, some of these teachers who are aggrieved have accused the Ministry of delaying their posting since 2018. Public Relations Officer of the Ministry of Education, Kwesi Obinfusu, said, only teachers who have met the requirement of writing the licensure exams will be posted. If you've done this service and you don't have licensure exams, you can't put anything there. That will give you away. And if you've done the uh, licensure exams but you don't have a national service certificate, you can't put anything there as well. So you will not qualify. That's why he was emphatic that if you've done your national service, as we asked you to do, if you've taken the licensure exams and then you've passed, be rest assured by by September this year, when we open the online portals for for uh, recruitment and you apply, you are qualified. He again explained that the sector ministry is waiting on the National Teaching Council to provide data for teachers who have met the requirement to be posted. You need to train teachers to understand the new curriculum before you take uh, pupils through. So the training college curriculum was developed first before the basic school curriculum. So the training colleges, as, as they stand now, they have a new curriculum that they are using. And that what they are going through is what has been developed for the public schools. So when they come out, they understand the curriculum better. They've done the content of the curriculum. They've done methodology for the curriculum. So they know which delivery styles to use, which uh, teaching techniques to use, and then to achieve the, uh, the current uh, uh, standardized based curriculum that we've introduced. He added, Gamme has secured enough financial allocation to pay the teachers when posted. You're watching News 360. There's more news after this break. Please stay with us. And welcome back to News 316. Business this evening, the Bulk Oil Storage and Transportation Company Limited, BOST, is to develop pipeline infrastructure to reduce the over-reliance on bulk road vehicles in the transportation of petroleum products. Estimates indicate that the cost of transporting fuel through pipelines is 60% lower than other means of transporting same. The bulk road vehicles, BRVs, Pipelines, river barges, and railway systems are the four main models of transporting petroleum products the world over. 
The major transportation models in Ghana are the BRVs, followed by the river barge and then a pipeline linking Temadepo and Akosumbo in the eastern region. A trip by a barge is 3.5 million liters of petroleum product, while a BRV carries 54,000 liters. Head of Corporate Communications and External Affairs at the Bulk Oil Storage and Transportation Company Limited, BOST, Malik Ejay, noted the target of BOST is to reduce the cost of transporting petroleum products across the country through pipeline as against BRVs and river barges. We are looking at constructing a pipeline from Akosombo all the way to Kumase. We'll be able to reduce the cost of sending products there, reduce the accidents on our roads coming from bulk road vehicles, and also extend the lifespan of the roads that we basically borrow to construct as a country. A research and policy analyst at the Institute for Energy Security, IES, Megdad Mohammed, urge the bulk oil storage and transportation company to properly engage communities along the right of way of the pipelines. Previously, we have had instances where the pipelines were laid without the buy-in of the communities through which it was passing. The, the communities did not own those pipelines, and so issues of vandalism on these pipelines were, 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 were quite common. The petroleum industry requires huge investment, and the world over it is full of interest groups, lobbyists, and cartels. To safeguard the integrity of the pipeline system by BOST, Megdad Mohammed called for stakeholder engagement. We have a situation where these uh, various stakeholders fight the managing directors or board chairmen who are pursuing the ideas because they think that it is going to make them lose money. When uh, BOST begins the rollout of the ATMV pipeline, it should be expected that you see various interests uh, raising issues here and there. Head of Corporate Communications and External Affairs, Malik Ejay, observed the use of river barges to transport fuel to the northern part of the country in partnership with Volta Lake Company has been effective and efficient. The length of time it takes to discharge from the barges compared to that of this makes it more efficient and economically reasonable to use the barges. However, the quantities we require to ship up there in one arrangement is such that it beats the demand across the northern region. The Bulk Oil Storage and Transportation Company Limited is meanwhile engaging the National Petroleum Authority, MPA, to restart export of petroleum products to Burkina Faso, Mali and Niger. Samsung Electronic Company Limited has launched its 8K QLED TV and RS5000 refrigerator in Ghana. The company is offering a free sound bar and a discount to customers who will make pre-order purchases till August 31. As family entertainment continues to evolve along with modern viewing habits, Samsung has focused on the use of pioneering technology to create unparalleled and personalized viewing experiences. The Samsung QLED 8K has a resolution four times higher than 4K UHD and 16 times higher than FHD with more than 33 million pixels. Now you can enjoy greater picture clarity like never before. I have taken a promise to the Ghana market that any product that has been unveiled, we want to be among the first to unveil it here. So this, the product has been unveiled in New York two weeks ago and it's now in Ghana. So this is a, already an achievement and it will arrive to the Ghana market in 15th of August. Television products manager of Samsung, Benjamin Ifrifa, said the new QLED TV supports AirPlay 2, Apple's upgraded Wi-Fi audio streaming technology, other content directly to TV from an Apple device. This TV has 33 million pixels. It has given you four times the picture quality of your normal 4K TV. I'm sure people will be asking, okay, but now we don't have... 8K content. We don't even have 4K content in this country. But this TV can upscale any content that you show on this TV. Digital Appliance Products Manager Seloma Basado highlights the features of the new RS5000 refrigerator. 
with the all-round cooling that we have in our refrigerator, we say that when you put any item in Samsung refrigerator, it keeps it fresh for a longer period of time. And that's what we want customers to understand. We have come to realize that sometimes you put items in the refrigerator, but the same items, this which is in the refrigerator, your fruit, your vegetable, it also get dry. So the perception is what is wrong. So we realize that because those refrigerators don't have the all-round cooling that Samsung we have in our latest uh, 2019 refrigerators we have brought. Samsung Electronics has assembly plants and sales network in 80 countries and employs over 108,000 people. The company is the world's largest manufacturer of consumer electronics and semiconductors by revenue. And that's it for business this evening. There's more business news on our website. is 3news.com. We'll be right back after this break. Please stay with us. In entertainment this evening, her journey to fame kicked off on TV3's kids' reality show, Talented Kids, and there has been no turning back for DJ Switch, born Eric Tando. Now, the DJ prodigy was over the weekend honored for her amazing exploits on the world stage and for her impeccable works aiming at inspiring the youth. Can we put our hands together for this wonderful royal? Your talent and performance have attracted one of the greatest and well-known media houses in the world. I'm talking about BBC. To this institution, we say thank you. At age 11, DJ Switch has not just become a household name. She's also caught the world's attention with her admirable talent. In 2018, she took her game a notch higher appearing as guest on international platforms where she stands guest with her fascinating craft. The youngster has interacted with world leaders, global showbiz icons and keeps rising by the day. Her foundation, DJ Switch Foundation, has impacted many lives promoting quality education and gender equality. She's made donations to schools, hospitals and needy communities. For promoting the image of the country and her school, the Talented Royal School honored the fast rising talent, Talented Kids Season 8 winner for her daring exploits. We hope you keep up the good work for many years to come. Ghana is proud of you. The whole world is proud of you. D. J. Street. So I have a foundation for the teachers whereby I have three goals, that is quality, education, good health, and also gender equality. So I've been going to schools to talk about these three goals, and then on the gender equality, I'm praying that we get sponsors so that we can do a workshop to talk about gender equality. DJ Swish was teary as she received another citation from BrainWise for exhibiting excellence in her career, inspiring hope and being a positive influence on the youth. Um, hello, lovely people of Ghana. You all know my name, DJ Search Ghana. Receiving this, these citations are not just going to act just positively on me, but also to impact positively on the society. I'm going to hand over the microphone to the chairman of the graduation who eventually and we say congratulations to DJ Switch. But that's all for the news this evening. My name is Aisha Yakubu. And I'm Issa Thanks for watching.